In the news tonight, some of the big pro winners for Kadumit have their say on this year's Grand Parade. A review of Barbados's progress to attain the Sustainable Development Goals. A Chalky Mount St. Andrew man remanded on a murder charge. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. And very good evening to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Lisa Broom. In our top story tonight, revelers from at least two bands have given the new Kadumant route the thumbs up. Our Sharika Griffith spoke with band leaders Betty West and Ryan Ford a day after the big jump up. After 33 years in the business, Betty West has experienced firsthand the various iterations of Grand Kadumit. This year, one of the major changes was the starting point for the street parade, which shifted to the helipad car park in Bridgetown. Ms. West says the feedback from masqueraders has been positive. I spoke to a good few of my band members and they really liked it. We had good view and they really liked it because I want for the, for the, the original route, you know, coming from the stadium and so on. So I generally wait to hear from my, my band members. Like when we went on the highway, they was calling and saying, we don't want to go there again. But yeah, and yesterday, this morning, I, a few of them called me to congratulate me. And they said, it's long. They say it's long. <laughs> they enjoy it. So. Similar sentiments are shared by band leader of Vida by Esquire, Ryan Ford. I think a lot of the revelers, they um, were extremely pleased with the, with the room uh, because the width of the road at the beginning, it was good. It was a tight squeeze from the start. We do know some roads do get a little tighter like when you get down uh, Eagle Hall side or, or, or into Black Rock or whatever because obviously more of the community is there. Uh, so I think from the Revelers' perspective, it was a nice start coming out of the bridge down and across Pelican Village and, and whatnot. The band leaders were also asked their thoughts on the two-hour postponement of the start time to 11 o'clock. People think that it was NCS, but the, we, we agreed, we agreed. They asked the questions and we agreed because everybody was worried about the, um, about the weather. It actually worked out that we didn't have any wastage from the breakfast because almost every single person was able to get there for breakfast. And that is positive because then you have a good foundation and ready to go. And then you also have your numbers with you before you get to the first judges. Despite the challenges securing sponsorship and late registrations, Betty West Productions received several awards, including Large Band of the Year in the Heritage category and the George Deere Award for Best Band on the Road. Vida by Esquire, only in its second year, was adjudged the Large Party Band of the Year and the Party Band with the Best Presentation. Both band leaders were happy with the results. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Fifth Element Mass, led by Kevin Small, was also in the winner's circle. They received the Roberts Weeks Award for Best Festival Designer and the BMA Brands of Barbados Award for Small Band, among others. Well, a new Tune of the Crop winner was also crowned after yesterday's Grand Kadumit. Bruce Lee Almighty's song, Tomorrow, was played 16 times before the judges for Kadumit. Lil Rick with Bam Bam and Tion Hernandez with Starter Pack tied for second place. This victory comes hours after his popular track, Tomorrow, was also declared the People's Monarch in a separate competition. The young soca artist is pleased with his win and notes the song was written with the fans in mind. Uh, all the other big acts, Bowl and like Pokemon Salish, you know? Like, you know, everybody come together. Everybody tell me congrats and keep doing the good work, man. The song is a good song. Keep pushing it and one day they'll get out there for sure in the international world. 2022, I was more of a comedian. But in 2024, I want to change that perspective. You know, give people a more serious me. And obviously, really, a lot of people have been passing away or what's not. Um, you know, just tell me what's something that, you know, that will touch some hard strings and let me know that we can enjoy life today and not until tomorrow because tomorrow is never promised. 
The Barbados Association of Retailers, Vendors and Entrepreneurs, or BARVEN, has also been giving its take on the new route and experience. President Alastair Alexander says members did not reap the sort of rewards expected from this year's Grand Cadouement. Vendors set up at the BARVEN market and along the mighty Grainer Highway, we are certain would have eventually done well. But we have to truthfully say we had our share of organizational disappointment. This government has assured us it will be rectified. And, and we expect out of proper in-depth consultation, much better will be done going forward. In other news now, despite making some progress to attain the Sustainable Development Goals, Barbados still has some way to go and should not become complacent. That assessment from Minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Senator Chad Blackman. He was speaking at the opening of the National Consultation on the Identification of Priority Sustainable Goals for Barbados. The two-day session is jointly hosted by the Economic Affairs and Investment Division and the United Nations Populations Fund. We have to constantly reevaluate where we are and use those, stepping stone, those successes as stepping stones for the advancement. And similarly, in this exercise of achieving the SDGs and the 2030 Agenda, as I said, bearing in mind that whilst we've achieved a significant set of, of those goals and targets, we're just six years away. And therefore, we have to now redouble or perhaps triple our efforts in ensuring that we can treat to this. So therefore, complacency among stakeholders has to, to stop, um, and, I'm, and I mean this at the global level, and of course at the local level, and using now these figures that I've outlined so far as a motivation and a roadmap in order for us to treat to how we close that gap. And SDG project coordinator in the SDG unit in the Prime Minister's office, Crystal Yearwood, has approved the results of the Voluntary National Review Report. Based on the reports of the VNR, we also had a national SDG mapping report and the rapid integrated assessment. We saw that 45.3% of our targets have been met or will be met by 2030 because there is substantial progress. And that's important because globally only 15% of targets are on track. And so for us as a small island developing state to be doing so well is really commendable. However, as Senator Blackman indicated, we must not become complacent and we still have significant work to be done to achieve the rest of the goals. As we see here, we have about 54% showing fair progress, but our need of substantial implementation in order to accelerate progress. Police have arrested and charged a 33-year-old Chalky Mount St. Andrew man in connection with the murder of Seth Batson. Kevin Don Pedro Chandler appeared before Magistrate Wayne Clark in the Holtown Magistrate's Court today in connection with that, in that incident that occurred on June 19th this year. He's been remanded to the Barbados Prison Service at Dodds and is expected to reappear on uh, next Monday, August 12th, at the District F. Bell Plain Magistrate's Court. And the Barbados Police Service wants the public to help them identify and locate the person in this photograph and video. He's been deemed a person of interest and is wanted for questioning in connection with a criminal matter which occurred in the Christchurch area. Police are asking anyone with information about the individual to please contact the Criminal Investigation Department South at 418 2609, the Oystens Police Station at 418-2612, Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477, or Police Emergency 211. Members of the public are also reminded it is a serious offence to harbour or assist wanted persons. And the police are also asking the public to help them locate a, to locate rather a teenager who escaped from the female admissions ward of the psychiatric hospital in Black Rock. She is 18-year-old Jade Barnett of Parish Land Christchurch. Police say Barnett, who escaped about 5 p.m. on July 29th, is about 5 feet 2 inches tall, slim, and of a brown complexion. At the time, she was wearing a big shirt and long pink tights and was barefooted. Coming up on Newsnight, a big celebration for a centenarian. 
The Men's Empowerment Group is making strides to steer the nation's youth on the straight and narrow. Rochelle Agar tells us the group is already reaping benefits from its Safe Zone program. President and founder of the Men's Empowerment Network, Fabian Sargent, has committed himself to helping the nation's youth improve themselves. Mr. Sargent says, too often there's negative news about things youth are doing, in particular young men, and he's pledged to highlight the positive in all of them. He made the point at the closing ceremony of the Advanced Safe Zone course where 20 teenagers aged 13 through 18 were handpicked to undergo the two-week training. We really, really want to help these young men to better themselves and to really, really excel in careers. We have, we are at the University of West Indies and this is very purposeful because we don't have a lot of boys pursuing tertiary education. And the idea really was to get them on this campus to feel the environment, to see the environment, and to aspire to be here, that they can really, I guess, elevate themselves in a professional way. And, um, you know, so that we can see young men doing much better in society. These days, all we hear is a lot of negative, but I would like people to know that there is positive that is happening. And Safe Zone, we are here to ensure that a lot more young boys are highlighted in a positive way. And minister in the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Investment, Senator Chad Blackman, has thrown his full support behind the program. Mr. Blackman adds it needs to be duplicated across Barbados and the wider CARICOM region and urges corporate entities to invest in similar programs as he too pledges to give back to the youth. Challenges are there, yes. But what we have to do as a society is to hold our young men, first of all, in love. And why do I say love? Oftentimes it's a situation where a lot of people come from families or situations where they feel lesser than they ought to be. But once you give them that nest of love, that potential strength through. There's tremendous potential around the world. But if we can get our young people now, and that's why I commend this program, it is tapping them between the age of 13 and 18, those critical stages where young people can either be the best they can be, or the worst they can be. And if you can capture them now and in the right direction, you start to see a different shift in society. And if Safe Zone can even have this on a broader scale, of course it will take resources, you will start to also see some significant levels of impact. Um, and I really want to encourage him and his team for what they're doing in trying to step in in the gap and saving our young men. Meanwhile, most outstanding participant, 15-year-old Nigel Granham, says he came with a plan to walk away with the biggest trophy of all. Nothing ain't impossible. Once you put your mind to it, you could do it. I think, as Jerry say, shoot for the stars, land amongst the moon. My goal in life, I want to be a biologist. So I aspire to continue doing work. I do better in my work so I can reach that goal. And the youth have all given promises to continue working on improving their lot. Rachel Agard, CBC News. Eugene Ince has a hundred reasons to celebrate, having marked her 100th birthday recently. The centenarian was treated to a luncheon at the Savannah Beach Club by family and friends. Ms. Ince is a mother to eight children, three of which have since passed, and dotes on her grandchildren and great-grands. Grandson Anthony Peters recalls how his grandmother raised him over his 44 years and taught him some valuable life lessons. As a youngster growing up too, <laughs> she was always used to sing and tell me a lot of things like what I should do and what I should aspire to be. She always said, you know, one of the sayings was, if you work for like a dollar, make sure you save some and put it down for a rainy day. A former seamstress, Miss Ince is a nurturer and was always willing to give of her last. And son Michael Ince says while she was a disciplinarian, she was always fair in her methods. You know, she's very kind, loving, caring person. She is, you know, she, she talked to in a calm manner. You know, if I go to she tried to, she tried to calm down a bit in a good manner. She don't get angry, she don't get hyper, she just calm things on an easy manner. Yeah. She said, come on, let's, let's eat cake. She said, come on, let's tell you something. I'm the boss. <laughs> she said, I'm the boss. Why is it going to this house? You don't rule this house, this is my house. And you better listen to her. No, next come to that. 
the bank come in it. Oh, you pass. She said, shut up. This is my house. And she controlled us as a mother. She don't play. Sports time now. Let's head over to Mark Seal, who's standing by with the day's biggest sports stories. Mark. Uh, very good evening indeed. Julian Alfred is now a two-time Olympic medalist. With an impressive time of 22.08 seconds, she secured silver in the women's 200-meter final this evening, giving St. Lucia their second medal. First place went to Gabrielle Thomas of the United States in 21.83 seconds. And with Alfred's second podium finish, the Caribbean now has eight medals. A bronze to Grenada's Victor Linden in the men's decathlon. Three silver and a bronze to Jamaica with second places in with Kashane Thompson in the men's 100, Shanika Ricketts in the women's triple jump, and Wayne Pinnock in the men's long jump. Then a third place to Regina Campbell in the men's shot put. There's a gold and now a silver to St. Lucia's Julian Alfred in the women's 100 and 200, respectively, her country's first two Olympic medals, and gold to Dominica Thea Lafon in the women's triple jump, her country's first Olympic medal. Now, in the overall medal tally, the United States have the most gold, 23, and the most overall, 58. We'll take a quick break here and come back with more news from the Olympics. Grenada's triple Olympic medalist Karani James is in line to win a fourth medal as he advanced to the final of the men's 400 meters today with the fastest semifinal time and the season's best 43.78 seconds. And Trinidad's Dream Richards plays second in his semifinal in 44.33 seconds to also advance. That men's final is set for tomorrow at 3.20 p.m. Barbados time. Also tomorrow will be the women's 400-meter semis. Barbadian Shade Williams is in semifinal number three in lane number four. The first two in each semi and the next two fastest will advance to the final. Now, those three women's semis will begin at 2.45 p.m. Meanwhile, Barbados chef the mission Cameron Burke has no doubt that Shade will perform well. As you know, Shadia is working with the with her club, her Jamaican club, the um, that she works with in, in, in Jamaica. So they are controlling her her preparations really, uh, and this has been ongoing now for the last couple of years. So she is in good good form, I would say, and she's working very hard. You know, as in preparation for her race. We're here to stay. That's the bold statement from Mackenzie Bovell, artist and manager of Blackout Art Studio, located at St. View, Sea View in St. James. The artist chatted with Trevor Thorpe for the Yes Business Report. Some pieces are already hanging at Platinum Coast Cigars Lime Grove. The artist admits Blackout Art Studio is in an already saturated market, but says it's bringing modernity to the marketplace. She also tells the Yes Business Report a roadmap for the way forward has been developed. Black Art Studio is an art design company. It specializes in catalog paintings that we would do on a regular basis, as well as yearly collections. We will have annual exhibitions doing our collection. And we're also looking for other ways to bring artists together. And we do many design pieces, such as hand-painted graphics and logo design. We also do a lot of stickers as well. The young artist says they have been making use of social media and other tools to increase their presence in the marketplace. It's not all fun and games. I have to do a number of emails a day, try to get more coverage on different social medias, different events that I have to go to per year, as well as planning my own events. And I also have to do a number of calls to different businesses to try to get more of my work situated, as Platinum Coast is one of the first places that you can see Black Oak Studios work, and we're looking for many others who enjoy hanging our work. Ms. Lavell, who currently operates from her Seaview St. James residence, says she has benefited greatly from the youth entrepreneurship scheme, which has encouraged her to develop the studio. 
Yes helps me socialize more to help me get to more networking events because for my one part I would just be the voice on the phone or the person emailing you but they help me get out there so people can see the world and see who I am and see who Black Art Studios is. She says consideration is already being given to setting up at another location as well as getting into the overseas market. Well, hopefully, we will have our own studio where you can come every day to see a part of our new work because I create every day. So something will always be there. So that hopefully the future holds a lovely studio in multiple locations, maybe an outlet overseas. We're looking at London right now to see if we can get more of a reach. And finding Blackout Art Studio is not difficult. You can find us on our Instagram or you can just look at, well, it's on the same Instagram, but you can also look at Facebook. You can find my page by searching up my name. And Blackout Art Studio also has a page on Facebook. But we have a website that you can just send us a WhatsApp and we'll send you the link. I think the British market and local pop-up events are among the developmental plans already in place for the Blackout Art Studio. Trevor Thorpe for the Yes Business Report. Let's go back to Mark now for the second half in sports. Mark, what do you have for us? Going to get back to some Olympics, but first some cricket. We're more than a week after their 3-0 series defeat to England. West Indies will be up against South Africa in the first game of their two-match test home series starting tomorrow in Trinidad and Tobago. The Windies are all but out of the reckoning for the World Test Championship final for the ongoing 2023-25 cycle. But skipper Craig Brathwaite notes there is more to play for. We had three intense, intense test matches coming back home to, to play against a good South Africa test team. And, it, you know, it's, it's good momentum. You know, obviously, Louis looked good. You know, a lot of guys look good. And it's important to, to continue it here and obviously carry, carry big, carry deep. I mean, it's not much you could be working on in between, you know, a couple of days. Um, it was good to get, you know, a feel for the middle. And obviously, guys quite familiar playing here in Trinidad. And, you know, just organizing your plans and how we want to go about playing and bowling on, on this type of surface. And I thought we did that well. We got a lot of information and, you know, we look forward to the game. You know, we're still playing against international teams, so we got to do the, the basics right. Um, but, you know, being familiar with the conditions is, is a plus. But, you know, as I say, you still got to go there and execute your plans. And, you know, we, we're 100% behind the boys and giving them the full support that they need to, to believe and, and believe they can get the job done. Play is set to start from 10 a.m. Now back to some Olympic news with Paris 2024 still in the air. Swimming coach Dave Farmer is already looking ahead to the 34th Olympiad in Los Angeles. And that's our newscast for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night.